الرحيم الحمد لله الواحد المنعام والصلاة والسلام على محمد سيد الأنام وعلى آله الكرام وصحبه العظام وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما دام يجري هذا النظام وبعد قال تبارك وتعالى هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا إن في الجسد لمضغة إذا صلحت صلحت الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected brothers, elders, mothers, sisters and dear youngsters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our creator and sustainer and we send the most choicest blessings upon the final messenger, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings upon him. We are currently passing the season of spring, and we see the rain, we see the sun. People are now walking outside, they're taking out their bikes, they're even taking out their barbecues. So we see that this is a season where in result of the rain and the sun, the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, we see life. In fact, in Arabic, the spring season is called Rabi'ah. And Rabi'ah literally means to spring up, to come to life, to revitalize. So inshallah, in today's few moments that I have before me, I would like to speak about revitalizing our hearts, bringing alive our hearts, and we see that the heart is definitely and most certainly the major or the major portion of the physical human body to allow it to function. There is a debate amongst those who look at the human body. Some say the brain is the main organ, but majority say the heart is the main organ. So why is the heart the main organ for the physical existence of the human being? Because it pumps blood. It circulates the blood in the human body and in result of that, we are able to function. If our hearts stop pumping, then Allah has created the system that we lose our lives. So in order for us to exist in a physical sense in this world, the heart is the main organ. And surprisingly, we also understand this from the source text that the heart is also the main organ for our spiritual existence, for our connection with the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for our being appropriate human beings who walk on the face of this earth. So, you know, people feel threatened when, you know, the doctor gives them the news that, you know, there are chances that you may you know, have some arteries blocked. You may have to go through some bypass surgery. Okay, we feel threatened regarding our heart health. You know, uh, diseases that are related to the heart. This may result in a stroke or a heart attack. But how many times we ask ourselves, do we feel threatened when we feel that we are spiritually down? How many times do we feel threatened when we look into ourselves, we analyze and we see that we're not engaging in good deeds. In fact, we're, we're, we're dropping into the, the pits of, of sin and evil. So the Prophet ﷺ emphasizes this and he says in the narration that I commenced with, أَلَا إِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ لَمُضْغَةِ Most certainly there is a piece of flesh in the human body. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَتِ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ When it is good, when it is reformed, when it is rectified, salah has so many good meanings. When it is reformed, rectified, it is good. The Prophet ﷺ says the entire body is also good. وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ But when the heart becomes corrupt, it's spoiled, it becomes evil, then the entire body, al-jasadu kullu, the entire body, meaning the actions that emanate from such a body, is also corrupt. They are also corrupt. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, warns us and says, Ala wahi al-qalb. Be aware that this piece of flesh is the heart itself. So, if we 
try to revitalize and we take this as a reminder the spring season when we things see things coming alive again there was no greenery during the winter and we see the greenery we look at the leaves and we reflect we look at the grass and we reflect we look at the system of Allah the creator and we reflect we can learn tremendous lessons I was reading an article related to a study that took place in 2008 this article is found in the Telegraph, a, a paper or newspaper that comes out in the United Kingdom. Uh, a lengthy article, but the summary of the study is that numerous professors, they undertook a study. And the study was related to what makes human beings happy. And they came to a conclusion from many conclusions that they derived, scientific study, that a person who believes in a god in any form of a God, a person who believes in any form of a God, they are more happier than a person who denies the existence of a God. A person who believes in a God, in any form of a existence of a supreme being, who we call God, we as Muslims believe it is only one and that is Allah. So these people are far more happier than the atheist. And then they deduce, they give their points, but one point that comes to mind that they have mentioned in the article, scientific study by non-Muslims, that when these believers who believe in God, when they are faced with a difficulty, when they have a stressful situation, when they have a problem, then they have hope that it can change for the better, relying on that supreme being that they believe in. They have the sense of hope. And we see this whenever any difficulty happens, what are we told to say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That this problem is before us, but really we belong to Allah and we shall return to Him. If Allah decides, the situation may get better. If Allah decides, it may not get better. But ultimate return is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The destination is Allah. So if we are pleasing Him, even in this difficulty, even in this situation, then we are on the right track. We are in the path to paradise. We are on the path that will lead us to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that in modern day, we are doing whatever we can to try and improve our physical surroundings for our physical bodies. So we wake up in the morning and we look in front of the mirror. And we see defects. We see things that are inappropriate. We clean ourselves up. The mirror is the reflection. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, he asked us, he summoned us to recite a dua, a supplication when we look in front of the mirror. And the Prophet ﷺ says we should recite the dua, Allahumma anta hassanta khalqi fahassin khuluqi. The same way that you have perfected my outer appearance. Oh Allah, you also allow me to perfect my inner values, my akhlaq, my character, my principles, my values. So the Prophet always reflected on his inner self along with the physical. So we see in modern time, people are uh, doing whatever they can to improve their physical surroundings, to ensure that we don't get sick, to ensure that we don't have ailments, to ensure that we have the asbab and the means of comfort and luxury. But we forget the heart, we forget the inner soul, we forget our inner values. And this is why we don't make an effort, a conscious effort to improve ourselves in the heart, in our spirituality and aspects of the elements that take us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bring good values into our lives. We see nowadays therapists, therapists, Doctors specifically for this reason that they will counsel how you can be a happier person. So a person has everything. They have millions. But they're not satisfied. They don't have satisfaction of the heart. They're not content. They, they, their, their lives are full of stress. So you have all these counselors, therapists who deal with this. And this is their job 24-7. This is what they're dealing with. So... We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this situation. Numerous verses of the Holy Qur'an, one verse that comes to mind, كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Nay, it is their hearts that have become rusted. And it is in result of what they have engaged in, يَكْسِبُونَ What they have earned for themselves, their actions. So Allah is speaking about how the heart becomes rusted. 
We, we take a piece of metal, we put it in water, it becomes rusted, it becomes weak. So our hearts, if they're saturated with sin, with evil, with wrong, and we don't make a conscious effort to improve ourselves in the heart, in the spirituality, then our hearts become rusted, they die. So we need to, number one, to revitalize, to bring life to our hearts. We need to understand the importance of the heart. We understand the importance in a physical sense for our well-being, for our health, etc. But we also need to understand the importance of it in terms of spirituality. A pious man once attended a funeral prayer. And he saw the people weeping. He saw the people crying at the janazah, at the funeral service. And he thought to himself and he shared his sentiments with the person that was standing next to him that, you know, people usually cry at the dead body. But we as human beings, we fail to cry at the dead hearts. We cry when a person passes away, that's only their body, their soul has now reached Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we weep and we cry because the physical person is not with us. So the, the pious person said, but we fail to cry, we fail to weep when our hearts are dead, when our hearts die. And he's referring to when a person sins, when a person is doing wrong, when a person is, is in transgression, is doing evil, then they, they feel no remorse. They don't feel the death of their hearts. So we need to revitalize our hearts. We need to revitalize our spirituality by number one, understanding that definitely this is something that is important, our spiritual aspect of our lives. It's not only the physical it's also what is inside, what is within ourselves. Number two is we need to monitor our hearts. We all know of patients who are, uh, you know, who have severe forms of diabetes, etc. They have those, those devices where they test their blood, the level of blood. You know, every so often after a few hours, there's a poke. And they test, they're monitoring their, their health, their blood level, their sugar level, their glucose level. So we are monitoring why we want to make sure. I've seen patients like this who say, you know, I need to watch my diet right now. I need to watch what I eat. I need to be careful. So this is monitoring and it should be done. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about preserving our health, etc. This is a topic on its own. But how many a times have we monitored our good deeds? Imam Malik, I've always mentioned this, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he would say we should analyze ourselves and we should see that today and yesterday is not the same. If I've performed 10 good deeds yesterday, today I, sh I should have 11. I should have more. It should not be on a decline. It should be on an increase. So we need to monitor ourselves. We call this muhasaba. We call this introspection. You know, on Tuesday, I met a brother and he told me, I knew that the conservatives are going to have a majority government. So I said, what made you say that? So he said, I've been watching all the polls. I've been seeing how... You know, people are voting. I've been looking at the analysis, the sentiments, the comments, etc. And I've made my, I made my judgment even before the results came out. qabla an tuhasabu. The Prophet ﷺ, it's noted that he talked about muhasaba and the companions, such as Ibn Umar said these words, that take hisab of yourself, do introspection of yourself even before Allah takes your hisab. Check yourselves. Take a stock of yourself, introspection. Iqra' kitabak kafa bi nafsika al-yawma alayka hasiba. Allah describes and draws a scenery of the day of judgment in this verse that I quoted. Allah says on the day of judgment, the people will be waiting for their hisab, will be waiting for their account, and their book of deeds will be given to them. And it will be mentioned to them, Iqra' kitabak, read your book yourself, you are sufficient. You don't need someone to tell you whether you've passed or failed. You can, you can analyze it yourself. You can do it for yourself. So we need to monitor. We need to check ourselves. Am I taking the right path? Am I on the, the path of good deeds, of virtue? Am I, am, I, am I engaging in sin? Am I doing wrong? Am I repenting? We need to analyze and introspect uh, constantly so that we can always revitalize and keep our hearts alive. I was speaking to a brother about all these new 
uh, you know, in modern time, we see so many natural disasters. And, uh, you know, we were saying that there's a time that's going to happen where every day we'll hear about natural disasters because the Prophet ﷺ says when the day of judgment draws nearer, there will be numerous natural disasters. So the scholars, the ulama, they write, and we were talking about this point, that when natural disasters will increase, then people will sort of become immune to the need of helping. Why? Because one disaster after another. We, we just helped in the Japan crisis. You know, this new crisis, you know, you want me to donate again? So we'll be, we become immune. We don't, our hearts die. We don't feel the need. So if we have the spirituality, if, if our heart's alive, no matter what type of calamity comes, how constantly it comes, we're ready to respond positively. We're ready to contribute. We're ready to make a difference. Whatever it may be. I mentioned previously that the Prophet ﷺ never said no. Anyone who came to him for a need, he never declined. If he had it, he provided. If he didn't have it, he would make the arrangements through his companions. So we need to constantly monitor ourselves. And number three, if we want to revitalize our hearts, we want to bring our hearts alive, we need to engage in good deeds. We need to constantly do good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ is being noted in one narration on the strength of Abu Nu'aym. He points out in this narration that a man came to the Prophet ﷺ. And he told the Prophet ﷺ, I complain of my hard-heartedness. My heart's become so hard, I don't, I don't have that feeling of spirituality. I don't feel like doing good deeds. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like engaging in good deeds. So the Prophet ﷺ, amongst the advices he gave him, he said, go to the orphans and surround yourself around them. Go to the poor people and help them. When you see their suffering, when you see their difficulty, it'll possibly soften your heart. So the Prophet ﷺ is recommending, is prescribing a good deed. And through that good deed, this person will feel the softness of the heart. And once the heart becomes soft, we're able to cry, we're able to shed tears, we're able to acknowledge our sin and our evil. And we're not only concerned about the external or the, or the physical, the tangible, we're also concerned about our inner souls, ourselves, our hearts. And in aspect of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ The real satisfaction, the true contentment, it is in obedience, in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring true contentment. I came across another study that, that, that's quite old now, but just as a reminder, a psychologist from Netherlands, was interested in Islam. So someone told him about dhikr, about remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you just say the name of Allah, subhanallah, subhanallah. You say the name of Allah, Allah, Allah. So he actually did a study. And in the study, he concluded that when you say Allah, it helps your respiratory system. And he's talking about how the alif, the pronunciation of alif, the pronunciation of lam with the shadda, and the pronunciation of ha, it, it goes down to your heart and it has a positive effect. It improves your health. Just by saying Allah, take, you know, look at the study. It's, you know, just Google, uh, you know, uh, psychologist from Netherlands on the word Allah. And you'll see the whole study there and how he's proved it with each letter and how it has an impact. So just by saying Allah, it brings relief. So imagine the commandments of Allah, if we follow them, how much relief it will bring to us. Externally, there may be the greatest of challenges. The Prophet ﷺ people looked at him and said, you're, you seem like you're suffering. Umar anhu at the occasion, the famous narration in Sahih Bukhari, when the Prophet ﷺ stayed away from his wives for a certain period of time, Umar ibn al-Khattab saw his situation and he said, the Roman emperor and the Persian emperor, they're in castles. They have luxury. You're our leader and you're, you're on a straw mat. So the Prophet ﷺ turned around and told him, مَا لِي وَلِدْدُنْيَا That, you know, I don't have this attachment. If I make dua, Allah will give it to me. But I don't have this intense attachment. I'm more concerned about my inner self. I'm more concerned about good character, good morals, good deeds. That is what makes a human being, not really the physical and the tangible. So in reality, we have to 
concern ourselves also with spirituality and our hearts. Uh, I conclude with a, a personal story of a person who told me how when he went for Umrah and he was in Medina Tul Munawwara and he didn't feel spiritual. He didn't feel like as if he's in the Holy Lands. You know, when you go to the Holy Lands, you, you, you remind yourself about Allah. You want to change yourself for the better. He said, I didn't feel this. I didn't have the feeling. So he talked to a few brothers and one of the brothers told him, look, I have these salawat and these durood. You, you recite them and look at the meaning. Because you're in Medina. And the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites durood, salawat, they will be closest to me on the Day of Judgment. So, you know, I have this recommendation. Read some of these durood and salawat. He says, I, don't have a, I didn't have a habit of doing this, but I did. It. Automatically, I started feeling spirituality. That this is the person who did so much for us in propagating the message. And I, I felt the awakening. I felt the spirituality in my heart. Really, when we concentrate also on spirituality in our hearts, we will see satisfaction. We will see comfort. We will see peace at heart. We will see the result of that. So we need to definitely understand the importance of our inner selves, just like the physical is also important. And we need to understand the importance of it. We need to monitor ourselves. And also we need to engage in good deeds. We make dua and we supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the understanding of developing our inner souls and our inner selves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from the good. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to become spiritual along with the physical. Wa